Hey everybody. Yesterday I shot a video talking about ick and how there are no sudden unexpected outbreaks of ick. Ick does not have a dormant period in its life cycle and therefore there is never a time where you're going to have this sudden um, eruption of ick in your tank that you were not expecting and came out of nowhere. That just doesn't happen. And I had a few people give me a couple of suggested scenarios where the fish keeper may mistake events for being this sort of sudden outbreak for ick. And I've heard these arguments before and I've thought about them before and neither of them really hold water. And today I want to go over them and talk about them because these are fairly common arguments. I've heard them by many people uh, over the years. First of all, though, I want to talk about why I'm going over this again and sort of hashing this out. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse or split hairs or anything like that. I'm not in some kind of argument with anybody because I'm going to prove myself right or anything like that. I just think it's important because this is a really common condition in the fish keeping community, both ick and the ick lookalike epist epistylus or epistylus, however that's pronounced. I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce it epistylus. Uh, if it is pronounced epistylus, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to call it epistylus. Both of these are really common in the aquarium hobby, and both of them have different types of treatments. Some treatment crosses over, but a lot of the treatment doesn't, and some of the treatment can even make things worse for one condition or the other. So knowing what you're dealing with is really important. And in my case, I brought fish home from the fish store one time that had ick, and to me, that's no big deal. Ick is an inconvenience. It's a nuisance. You treat them for ick, the ick goes away, and your fish are fine. So bringing some fish home from the fish store that had ick on it was not a big deal to me. These are fish I really wanted. I didn't think I was going to get a chance to get them again, so I bought them. Ick included. I came home and started treating them for ick, and I could not get rid of this ick. I tried and tried and tried. I'd always used a product called Ick Attack. Never had a problem with it before. It's always worked exactly as directed. Worked like a champ every time. Wasn't doing anything. I tried and tried and tried. I went through the entire bottle and nothing was happening. Um, little did I know at the time, I had never heard of a pistolus. I was treating for ick. And of course, one of the things you're supposed to do when you treat for ick is turn your temperature up, which is the worst thing you can do for a pistolus. Uh, the tank was dirty. It was just the conditions were completely perfect for Epistolus. I didn't know that, so I didn't treat for that. I treated for ick and so on and so forth. Long story short, if I'd have known what I was dealing with right out of the gate, I would have been much, much better off. And in that case, when you bring a fish home from the fish store and it's got little white spots on it, it's a pretty good chance it probably is ick in that scenario. But if it is a pistolus, you can tell. You can actually look at it and identify the difference between the two. Uh, I attached a very good article to my video yesterday. I'll attach the same article to this video. Uh, if you want to check that out, it will help you identify what those little white spots are, even if you've just brought them home from the store. In the scenarios we're talking about, however, we're talking about this unexpected outbreak that after months and months of not introducing anything to your tank, and that includes plants, substrate, woodwork, rocks, anything, not just new fish. Uh, we'll go over why that is in just a moment. But if you've had a tank that's been stable for months on end, nothing's been introduced to the tank, and then you start suddenly seeing little white spots developing on the fish, it is not ick. Ick does not have a dormant cycle where it will suddenly erupt out into your tank and you're going to start having these issues with ick out of nowhere. The two scenarios that I've been suggested that could cause a fish keeper to believe that he has this sort of outbreak of ick coming seemingly out of nowhere would be one would be tank temperature and then the other would be if you had an asymptomatic carrier fish. So we'll start with the tank temperature. The life cycle of ick is dependent on the temperature of its surroundings. So the warmer it is, the faster it goes, the cooler it is, the slower it goes. In a tropical temperature tank in low mid 80s, that whole process from start to finish, and if you're not familiar with the cycle, the parasite starts out in the fish's body where it eats the fish and the slime coat and the flesh, when it's eaten its fill, it falls out of the fish, it falls to the bottom of the tank, 
and encapsulates itself in a cyst that is sort of sticky. Now this may stick to substrate, it may stick to rocks, woodwork, leaves on plants, grasses, anything in the tank that it could stick to, it may. So that's why you, if you've introduced anything into your tank, you may have introduced these cysts that are the sort of reproduction pods of this parasite. So it falls out of the fish, goes to the bottom of the tank, and encapsulates itself in a cyst, and then it begins dividing. And it divides, and it divides, and it divides. And when the numbers inside the cyst get so big that it just can't hold it anymore, it erupts out into the water, and hundreds or even thousands of these little swimmers go out looking for a new host. They find the fish in your tank, and the process starts all over again. In an 82 degree tank, that process only takes about a week from start to finish. In a 72 degree tank, that process might take two weeks. But the period where the, the, the uh, parasite is encapsulated in a cyst only lasts for about a week, even in a cooler temperature tank, a room temperature tank like this one at 72 degrees. That cyst period only lasts for about a week. So the idea that you're, you're gonna have this gap where there's this period where there doesn't appear to be any ick and then suddenly there is, isn't going to ever arise in any tanks we normally keep. Every time this gets brought up, it always gets mentioned that in a 50 degree tank or a 50 degree water, this process can take two months, can take a couple of months to occur. Nobody keeps fish in a 50 degree tank. If I went across the street to the stream right now that's got ice on it, and I took the temperature of the stream in February outside, it would be warmer than 50 degrees. You, nobody keeps fish at 50 degrees. So this idea that there's going to be this month long period where it's dormant because it's so cold in the tank, who keeps fish in 50 degree tanks? Nobody. So that's not going to be an issue. Furthermore, the way ick works, if you've ever experienced ick, you'll know that when you start to see the little white spots develop on the fish, those white spots just get more and more and bigger and bigger. They don't go away and then come back and then go away and then come back. Not all of the little parasites fall to the bottom of the tank simultaneously and then swim back up simultaneously. It's a cycle. They're all going to different parts of the cycle. And so once a fish starts developing those little white spots, they just get more and more, and it looks like somebody's sprinkling salt on the fish and they get more and more covered with this as time goes on. So if you were in a really low temperature tank, you still wouldn't experience this gap where there's no ick and then there's ick again and then there's no ick and then there's ick again you would just see those spots develop much more slowly but this process would still be the same process again this is never going to happen because nobody keeps fish in those kinds of temperatures even if you keep a tank in the mid 60s Again, I don't, you know, unless you're keeping trout or something, I don't know what you would keep a tank in the mid 60s for. But if you did, if you do keep cold water fish, then this whole process is still only going to last maybe a month for that whole entire life cycle. So, so the idea that a, that a cooler temperature tank might fool a fish keeper into thinking they have this sudden outbreak of it just really doesn't hold water once you really start thinking about how this whole process works. The other scenario that I always get talked about or get told about is an asymptomatic carrier fish. And there are fish that are asymptomatic carriers. And we should all know what asymptomatic carriers are and how they work by now. But if you don't, an asymptomatic carrier would be a fish that has ick, you just can't see any outward signs of it. It's not showing any symptoms. So in the, the scenario of the asymptomatic carrier fish, let's think about how that would work. I bring a fish home from the store that is an asymptomatic carrier, so it's infected with ick, but I don't know it. I put it in my quarantine tank. The ick cycle keeps continuing. This fish still has ick. It's still going through its hatch and re, you know, re-swimming cycle and all that. And the whole time, I don't know it because it's an asymptomatic carrier and I don't see any outward signs of the ick. So after a month, I decide, okay, this fish is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And I put it in my tank. Now what happens? First of all, you've already blown the idea of a sudden unexpected out. You just put a new fish in the tank. So that doesn't count right off the bat. But let's overlook that fact and say you've put this healthy fish in the tank. It's not going to swim around in the tank for a year and then suddenly the other fish in the tank are going to start getting ick. The moment you put an infected fish in the tank, it's going to continue doing the life cycle of ick 
And the first time those free swimmers come back up into the water column, they're going to infect all the other fish in the tank and you're going to see ick. And again, it's because you just put a fish in the tank. That's not a scenario where you had this sudden unexpected outbreak of ick. The only possible way I can imagine this scenario sort of playing out would be if you brought a fish home that had ick, it was an asymptomatic carrier, after you finished its quarantine period, you put it in a tank by itself, you know, you had an arowana or something in a tank by itself alone, and it continued having ick for this entire period. Now, you're still not getting a sudden outbreak because it's got ick the whole time, but I, I'm okay with the idea of calling it a sudden outbreak because from the point of view of the fish keeper, everything was fine. And then say a year goes by, this fish has been dealing with ick this entire time, and maybe it gets sick in some other way, or the tank temperature gets a little low for a few days and its immune system gets a little suppressed. Then the ick that it's been carrying this whole time might start getting a little more of a foothold and you might start seeing outward signs of it or something like that. In that scenario, in that scenario only, would the fish keeper say, wow, a year after another, suddenly I have ick in my tank. But again, what are the chances of you having that one single asymptomatic carrier fish, which aren't common, but they do exist. That's the one fish you decided to bring home and put it, you know, the, the, the way this is talked about in the hobby, I hear from people all the time how I'm wrong. I had ick break out after months and I hear that all the time. So it's not this rare once in a million scenario where there's one fish and there's one, you know, people talk about this all the time as though ick really is this thing that goes dormant and can stay in your tank and lay low. People talk about how it always lives in our tank and it's always this thing that's present in our substrate. That's not true. It's not always present in our substrate. It's not some sort of bacterial load that lives in the tank. It's, it's not, it's a host dependent parasite if it's not actively feeding on the fish and moving through that life cycle of leaving the fish reproducing and then getting back into the fish if anything breaks that chain the ick dies off so as I said before if you want to if you've had a bad outbreak of ick and all the tank all the fish in your tank die I hear people talk about oh I stripped the tank down I boiled it I threw the substrate away and bought new substrate you don't have to do any of that if all the fish in your tank have died, you can either just heat the tank up to 95 degrees and that'll wipe the ick out once and for good. Just heat it up to 95 degrees and let the tank cool back down and the ick is dead. Or just let the tank sit there at room temperature for two weeks. If there's no fish in the tank, that ick is gonna die. There's no possible way that ick can live if it's not actively infecting fish and then going back down into the substrate and then coming out and actively infecting the fish and then going back into the substrate. And they're not all doing it at the same time. So you're not gonna see white spots and then no white spots and then white spots and then no white spots. It doesn't work like that. You're gonna see white spots start to develop, usually around the very tips of the fins, maybe you might see them around the edge of the gills and they're gonna to start to spread. And eventually you'll start seeing it on the body and more and more fish will start getting it. The cooler your tank is, the longer that process will happen, but that same process will still unfold. There is no scenario where you're going to not have ick and then you're going to have ick without having introduced anything to your tank. So again, I'm not trying to nitpick. I just think it's important that we treat the right, you know, disease with the right medication and the right treatments because if we treat for the wrong thing we can actually do more harm than good and so on and so forth and this is just a really commonly mistaken and misunderstood uh, sort of look-alike diseases that we have in the hobby so a is probably what you're dealing with if you have a sudden outbreak of white spots all over your fish it's probably not ick so that's my two cents again that's probably makes my four cents at this point so I'd be interested to hear any follow-up thoughts from anybody else your comments questions etc uh, you know what to do with all that. I will leave a link to that article down below. Again, very valuable article. Even if you've never experienced this stuff, it's worth reading. Just so you've got it in your toolbox and you know if you ever do start seeing these white spots, you'll have some understanding of what you're looking at and looking for. Because you can identify it just by looking at it. You really can do that. The way, I don't remember the details, but one grows on the fish's eyeball and the other doesn't. One has, you know, this shape spots and the other one has regularly evenly spaced Read the article down below. Good article, worth reading, good to know. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.